don't judge a book by its cover or don't judge a book by the money you used to pay for it ah. hey south florida hey south florida hey south florida i'm alexis malord i'm alexis malord i'm alexis malord with another real estate tip alexis malord with another real estate tip Hey South Florida, I'm Alexis Malord with another real estate tip. Today we're gonna to be talking about something that I would consider to be a little bit of a controversial topic in real estate, which would be Section 8. In my opinion, Section 8 can be very beneficial for both landlord and tenant. However, it has such a negative stigma. So my goal with this video is to try to get away from that negative stigma as much as possible. So once you apply for Section 8, there is a wait list. Sometimes it's a year, sometimes you're waiting longer. I actually had a client who was waiting 30 years for Section 8 to approve her. She finally got approved 30 years later. Um, and we're in the process now, so yay for her. The voucher amount is based off your income and your family size. So once you have those two and you're on the wait list, um, depending on how long it's backed up in your city or state, um, then you'll be approved for Section 8. Once you are approved for Section 8, you don't necessarily have a voucher yet. You have to go through the process of looking for a house, um, finding one and putting a lease um, before your voucher would be considered activated. Once you have an, a lease uh, and you send the request to Section 8 for it's called request for tenancy approval once you send that to section 8 then your voucher would become activated so then once your voucher is activated you're good to go um, you're not in any jeopardy of losing it if you do not activate your voucher within a certain period of time and they will they will specify that certain period of time your voucher would be deactivated and then you would have to go through the application process over again I wouldn't say that the application process is hard necessarily. I would say that it's just long. Said, with section eight, you go through the process of home searching like normal. You get a realtor, you look at homes, you see if you like it, if it's suitable. The difference between section eight is finding, some, finding a landlord that will accept the voucher. Now here's where the negative connotation comes. So a lot of landlords view negative view negative a lot of landlords view section 8 negatively um, because mainly let's be honest they've had bad experiences with those on section 8 you have those people who are going to be testing the system to see how much they can get over on it so you do have those people who don't care and are messing it up for the rest so they've had the landlords have had bad experiences with those on section 8 tearing up their property and um i guess not paying their part of the rent so please guys take care of your property that you're renting that's a part of your contract anyway you as the tenant have a contractual agreement with section 8 for them to be paying your rent anyway and a part of that agreement is to obtain and keep up the property so if you're in section 8 and you're one of those people who don't care to take care of the property that you're renting, you're messing it up for everybody else and I would kindly ask you to take care of your property. That's all. Um, so that's mainly where the negative connotation comes from. But I can actually say that that's not the case for everyone. I've met, I've encountered a lot of people on section 8. Those who have encountered are families um, who are either working or they are disabled in some way. Um, I've also encountered people who are using Section 8 in order to save more money for them to buy a house later on. And there's no there's no knocking that hustle. That's actually a good way to save some money. And, you know, uh, yeah, save some money. <laughs> That's a good way to save some freaking money. <laughs> anyway, so... Yeah, so I what I'm trying to say is that I've encountered some really good normal people who are using the government assistance and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, we could actually use more government assistance for everybody. Now. Let's really back into the section eight. 
So the people that I've encountered in Section 8 are family-oriented people, people who are disabled, people who are just trying to save some money, people who are working hard, um, just trying to live. Um, there is a lady that I know in Section 8 who actually is coming from a different country uh, for, to America. So that's another good reason to get on Section 8 if you've never been to the country before and you need somewhere to live, you need help, that's a good option too. So I wouldn't think of Section 8 as something negative. I see it as something definitely positive. And that was for the tenants. So for the landlords, why is Section 8 positive? Well, because you are guaranteed to get government money every month. Like that check is coming to you regardless every month. And if you're like me, you like to help people, you love to see other people with a smile on their face and just happy and enjoying and helping, helping others makes you feel good. So why not give some, somebody or family in need a place to stay and you're getting paid for it? Win-win. Does it make you feel good? So go out and buy 50 million properties and put them all for Section 8 so you can house 50 million people and be happy and feel good. <laughs> Every month. Um, it's actually less risky, in my opinion, than renting to someone who's not on Section 8 and they have to give you money and you have to call them or hunt them down for your money and things like that. Um, some people on Section 8 do have to put a portion in and some people on Section 8 get their entire voucher covered for them by the HUD housing. So each scenario is different. But either way, you're definitely getting paid like clockwork every month. You don't have to chase anybody down. Your money's gonna be available for you. You do have to go through an inspection. So when the property is first being rented out, there is an initial inspection just to make sure everything is up to code, make sure you're providing a suitable place for someone to live. Um, some states do monthly inspections. Some states do inspections every three months, every year. It just depends on your state. Some states say that they're gonna do inspections and they never do. So it's a case by case scenario, but keep in mind that there are inspections that need to happen. And um, inspections are also looked at negatively when it comes to the Section 8, which I don't think it should be either. And here's why. When you're getting ready to sell your home, eventually you're going to sell that home. Having those inspections done constantly and at no cost to you is good because then you can see if there's anything wrong with your property, if it's not up to code, fix it and you're good to go when it comes down to actually like selling the house but that's just how i think okay they do have to approve the rental amount this is important they do have to approve the rental amount of the property that you're renting they want to see that the rent is uh affordable and it makes sense for the area that the the home is in and then then you have to go through the inspection you do have to pass inspection in order for your family to move in if they don't pass inspection then you either have to fix whatever was wrong and reinspect, or section 8 just won't be for you and everything after that is normal that was my opinion on section 8 I feel like like I said in the beginning I think it's um, a positive thing and I think more people should start to see things in a positive aspect than negative um, you do have your bad apples but one bad apple can't ruin the whole bunch oh so yeah keep that in mind if you've had one bad experience just keep going with it because there's a family in need of your home and you're still getting paid like normal you're not gonna have to chase down people for your rent that's rightly owned to you alrighty guys so that was my thoughts opinions tips and tricks on the section 8 process if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel to join the family it is free and definitely put that notification bell on so that you are notified as soon as I upload a video I will be also revamping the channel a little bit so you will see that in effect uh, over the next few weeks but 
Anyway, if you are a renter, a seller, a buyer, or an investor in the South Florida area and you're looking for a real estate professional, go ahead and contact me. Anyway, this has been another video here on Alexis' South Florida Oasis. Holla at your girl, cause you know I'm always happy to help. To my um, tenant tour on section eight, I just want to leave you with a piece of advice. Just because you are on section eight does not mean that that is a negative, does not mean that you need to use that as a crutch, does not mean that um, you are any less than someone who is renting normally. With that being said, you will be treated the same as uh, someone who is not on section eight would be when they are applying to rent a property, which means that your credit is going to be checked, your um, background is going to be checked, um, as well as your income because I've had a lot of clients who are on section 8 and they feel like that just because they have they're on section 8 and their rent is going to be paid every month that nothing else but that matters but no so by all means use section 8 but make sure your credit is somewhere at least 600 650 just make sure that your other background uh, information like credit background check criminal history eviction history um things like that are a one how if in my opinion if your credit is good your background is good you've never been evicted but you're on section eight you would be like a great tenant because not only am i getting my money from the government every month but you're a trustworthy person and you look like it on paper so I, I will, let's take away from this. With that being said, if you are a person who are in section eight and you find it hard to find uh, a rental, fix one of those things. Your credit, your background, eviction history, criminal history, something in that nature has to be up. And for those, on, uh, for those landlords, Section 8 people are regular people. They are no different than those who are not on Section 8. And someone who is on Section 8 might be a better tenant than someone who's not. Don't judge a book by its cover. Or don't judge a book by the money you used to pay for it. Ah.